Snarkers and Stationery Enthusiasts, it's Christy here, Snarky Wordsworth over on Instagram and Reddit, and today I've got a brand new video for everybody out there. We're going to be talking all about my top five favorite fountain pens for beginners under 50-ish dollars. Why the ish? Well, because the pen that's at the top of the price range is a little bit over 50 if we're talking about MSRP, but you can almost always find it for significantly less than that. So I fit it in there anyway for a lot of reasons, uh, which we'll talk about more once we get to that particular pen. Uh, but before we get to the main list, I have three honorable mentions to talk about. Why honorable mentions and not part of the actual list? Well, because they are mildly controversial in some ways. Um, so these three pens are all from the company Jinhao. It's one of the Chinese pen companies. I really like them. I have multiples of these in different colors and they, they write very, very well. Now, what's controversial about them? These are all dupes for other much more expensive uh, pens and pen brands. Now, from a strictly legal standpoint, these are 100% A-OK -okay because they are dupes. At no point is Jin Hao trying to say that these are, say, a Mont Blanc or a Sailor Pen or a Parker Pen, but they do look very, very close to identical to them. But legalese wise, th this is how it, it works, that it, they, they are not considered bootlegs. Um, and as someone who has worked in um, the legal field as far as copyright and intellectual properties go in the past, that's, that is your loophole. Uh, and as I said, all three of these pens work very, very well and are great places to start if you're just beginning. Um, this one right here is the uh, Jinhao 51A, and it is a dupe of the Parker 51 super famous pen. The ones that I like the most in the 51A line are the ones that have the wooden handles. So this one, wooden handle, wooden body. This one is uh, an, a maple. There's one that's rosewood that I have that's really, really lovely. And there's a black one and a couple others. There's a tiger eye. It's, And then they also have um, resin bodies as well. But I do like the wooden bodied ones. What I think is great for some pen users is that this is a hooded nib. Um, if you happen to be someone who chokes up really high on the section of your pen, this is a nice option because of course you can choke up pretty high and still avoid getting ink all over your fingers. Um, you do as with all hid hooded nibs have to be aware of where the nib is pointing, how it, how it's oriented. But once you get comfortable with that, this is a great option again, for, especially for people who, uh, choke up a lot, writes very, very well. This one is the Jinhao 82, I believe, and the Jinhao 82 comes in a ton of colors and is designed as a dupe for the Sailor Pro Gear Slim. This one I got just because I wanted to sort of compare it to my Sailor GPS uh, in the Dragon Palace color, and they are very similar looks wise. Um, and at some point in the future, I'm going to be doing a comparative video with the with the two of those, uh, and. You can see it does look very much like a Pro Gear Slim. Um, all three of these do have just a stainless steel nib. It's not nothing super fancy, but you can see it's... Oh, come on, focus for me here, guys. Focus or not. Maybe... There we go, kind of. Um, they do have some nice detailing on the nib, I mean, considering. And... As mentioned, they have tons and tons of colors of these, and they seem to be making more and more. I've been enjoying this one a lot. I just sort of toss it in my bag and uh, go. And then this one is the Jinhao X159, designed to be a dupe of the Mont Blanc 149. It is a big, chunky pen. Uh, it's a very big, chunky pen. <laughs> this is actually probably not one of my personal favorites. It writes incredibly well. Uh, really, truly, it, it is a really good writer. It is a little bit um, girthy for me. Uh, I do prefer smaller pens. I have pretty small hands, so it does it, it does feel a little bit too um, broad in the section for me, but uh, the weight is really solid, and I know my friends who do like a slightly larger pen love this, uh, and all three of these pens you can get for well under $10 
depending on where you buy it, you can even get some of them for a little bit over $2. Uh, and, you know, if you're just starting out and you want something very pretty, because you can see these are lovely looking fountain pens that write very, very well, these are a really good option. Again, you have that slight controversy because they are dupes for more expensive pens, but, you know, it it is what it is. They are, they, they write well and they look lovely. So just as I mentioned, these options are available along with many, many others, but these three in particular, I really do enjoy writing with. Okay. So my first mention for pens under 50 ish, this one is under $10 and it is the platinum preppy. Now the platinum preppy is great. Comes in a number of different colors and different designs, all of them under $10. And this one in particular is from their WA line. And the wall line has uh, designs like this uh, that are sort of based on traditional Japanese motifs. And it's a really great pen. Platinum does exceptionally nice designs and it writes very well. It does, I don't know if you, you can see here, uh, it does have that sort of safety seal. So you can leave this pen, not write with it for quite some time. And still, when you first open it, it writes like a dream. Um, this one is both cartridge and converter friendly. Uh, I just have a cartridge in here right now. And you know, when I feel like it, I just refill the cartridge rather than getting a converter for it. But you can, you do have options. Uh, you have different lines for this one. There is a more plain line than this. That's just sort of a um, basic body, which, just, which doesn't have a design on it that runs around $5. This one runs a little over seven. And then there is a limited edition line that runs around 10 with just even more detailed designs on it. But for a $10 and under pen, excellent, excellent option. Um, I really do like platinum pens in general, and this is a good way to sort of dive into the brand, I think. Okay, before I jump into my next pick, which is my uh, top beginner fountain pen under $20, just a quick apology about the massive lighting shift. Um, I am having to re-record this several hours after the initial recordings. The first recording of this particular segment got lost somewhere along the line. I'm not really sure what happened. It is what it is. But in any case, uh, moving on. This is my pick for top beginner fountain pen under $20. This is the Pilot Kakuno. I love this pen. I still carry this pen with me almost daily. Uh, I still have to fill it with ink for this week, but I really, really enjoy all of the Kakunos. They are lovely little pens. They were initially designed uh, in Japan for school children. And if I can get this to focus, can you see the... An, a, the absolutely adorable little smiley face, um, which is supposed to indicate, hey, this is the right side up for a nib. I mean, it might seem kind of obvious to those of us who have written with fountain pens for a long time, but I mean, I can see that for a beginner. Like, that's a lovely little way to remind yourself. And then also, I just, I just find it such a charming little touch. It's like, look, he's sticking his tongue out. It's, it's super cute. Um, all of these nibs are fantastic, all the way from extra fine, all the way through broad. I've played around with all of them in, and I just in general really enjoy Pilot nibs. I'm a big fan of Japanese fountain pens to begin with, but they do run a bit more fine than Western pens, of course. So if you like a really, really thin, detailed line, these are a great way to go. This is, oh, sorry, Mr. Crab. Uh, this is clearly their full demonstrator version. I really like using this with the Con 70 one. I think the Con 70 is a really great um, converter. Uh, you can use cartridges in this. I'm just more of a converter person. I think it's about 10,000 times more easy to use than the 40. And I just think it looks really sharp with the silver at the bottom uh, in the demonstrator version. You can also get a ton of other colors right now. Um, there are some models that are completely opaque with more of a white or cream body and uh, a different colored top, whether it be pink or, or lavender or yellow. And then they have another line that's sort of uh, translucent with different shades, not the clear, but I, there, I believe that there's one that's kind of a minty green looking one and then a bluish one. 
And those are really, really pretty. Um, I have a couple of the demonstrators in different nib sizes, and then I have one that has the cream colored body and the lavender colored cap, and I really like them all. Uh, these run uh, around $14 MSRP. You can usually find them for less, but if you're going for a total MSRP, 14, around $14. They also have a licensing deal uh, where they have some Pokemon colored and designed lids. Those are really cute. Those are about $29 though. So definitely gets out of that below $20 range, but also super duper cute. I do have a Pikachu one that I really enjoy too. So yeah, if you are looking for a fantastic pen that you can definitely grow with, because again, I've had this one for several years. It was not my personal first fountain pen, but I've had it for several years. Still works absolutely marvelously. Uh, and it's a pen that I think you can keep with you and you will still enjoy writing with uh, no matter how much experience you get with fountain pens. Just a great choice, uh, a lot of fun, and many, many different color choices. Okay, the next pen we are going to talk about is the favorite fountain pen under $30, and this is the Caveco Sport. I adore Caveco Sports. They are just so cute and so lovely and so easy to collect. Um, so Caveco Sport is, of course, a pocket pen, if you couldn't tell. Uh, and this one in particular is my favorite of the ones that I have in the plastic. This one is iridescent. It was one of their uh, special edition pens, and it's just so cute. Um, I wish that the camera could pick up just how lovely this is. It's just a standard plastic Caveco Sport, but the plastic is gorgeous with like these pinks and blues and gold. It's, it's a great, great pen, especially when you're talking about something that is under $30. Uh, the Caveco Sports uh, plastic line comes at, in around $27 uh, MSRP, but you can get them for much less. Uh, and they're just a really great pocket pen. So comfortable to hold. It's the reg it, Once you post it, it just becomes or standard size. Um, as I mentioned, I generally really like small pens, so this works absolutely perfectly for me. Um, I do think if you like a really hefty pen, this one might not be for you, but give it a try. Just see for yourself uh, because they are so great. Um, I have a lot of these in the plastic. I do tend to stick with neutral, so this one uh, is a little bit more than I usually get, but this one's their olive special. This one is a macchiato, just a standard black. And these can take a beating. The standard black was my everyday carry pen in my uh, traveler's passport notebook. And I've dropped this thing a million times. I mean, you can see, I think a little bit of the scuffing because this again has hit the pavement on multiple occasions, but still writes like it was brand new. Um, it's, it's, it, keeps on kicking. So it is what it is. But uh, for under $30, again, you can get a ludicrous number of designs and colors. Uh, if you're willing to pay a little bit more, you can go with the uh, aluminum line and those have some really lovely metallic colors. And then beyond that, this is now my everyday one. This is the uh, Caveco Sport in brass. And I adore this thing. It is heavy like wicked heavy. So if you don't like heavy pens, not for you, but it's another one of those where the more it ages, the better it looks. So if you do find yourself enjoying these ones that start out at around 27, and again, you can get these at under $20, especially if you shop around on eBay and whatnot, but MSRP again, 27, you know, if you want to graduate from that, you have a place to go. There are other uh, materials within this particular line that do uh, have a higher high, uh, price co price point. So there's a little place to go. But if you just want to stick with these ones, you still have options. I, of course, tend to stay towards neutrally shades, but you can get like a bright... Um, I believe you can get like some brighter colors, like some pinks and some greens and, you know, just it's, it's a rainbow of shades. And these ones are really fun to have a little collection of. So another thing to think about, oh, and I didn't mention, uh, you can get like little accessory clips for them. This is just the deluxe in the gold 
and I think they run MSRP $6. So you can dress them up a little bit if you want to, so it doesn't end up just being the cute little plastic torpedo that you see here. Um, again, this one is the Caveco Sport, and it is under $30. Okay, my pick for favorite beginner fountain pen under $40 is the Twisby Eco. I love Twisby pens. I think they're great, uh, but I particularly enjoy the Eco because it's a really good starting off point. One of the things that I think is fantastic for beginners about this particular line is that you can learn so much about how a fountain pen works when it comes to Twisbees. Why? Because each Twisby comes with a tool that allows you to break the pen down. Um, this is uh, for ease of cleaning and just to be able to fine tune bits and pieces of it, but really, this is how I learned how a fountain pen works. Uh, because before then I just sort of, you know, been like, oh, okay, it's a pen. Fill it with ink when you need to, you're good. But with this, you know, for me, it's always been uh, one of those things where if I can see the bits and pieces, if I can take it apart and put it back together, then I just sort of understand it a little bit better. So I do really, really love that aspect of these Twisby pens in particular, the Eco. Um, the Eco also for beginners, it's nice. You don't have to worry about cartridges. You don't have to worry about converters. What you see is what you get. Uh, this piston pen, when you fill it up, you see exactly how much ink you've got. So it's easier to gauge how much ink you're going to have by the end of the day. Do you think you're going to need to do a refill before you head out the door? Uh, because this body is always visible. Uh, this particular one that I have is their demonstrator one where both the, um, the cap, uh, and the, uh, bottom are both clear, but what's really cool about this line is that it comes in so many colors while the body always remains clear. Your cap is going to change colors depending on, um, you know, some of them are, they make special editions. Like there was one that was Jade recently, a saffron colored one recently. So it's, super duper easy to collect these if you do think you're someone who would like to be able to collect a certain kind. So much like the Caveco Sport, this one has that aspect to it as well. Uh, but yeah, other than that, it's also a really good nib, at least for me. So before the Eco, I had never played around with stub nibs or the the limited amount I'd played uh, around with stubs had been sort of eh, here nor there. I didn't really love them, but after getting a stub nib in the Eco, I absolutely adore it. Um, so if you are someone who would be interested in trying out a stub nib, if you never have before, I definitely would recommend that, uh, these for that because they write so well. It's such a smooth, comfortable line. Um, that it's, it's just, it's sort of definitely my go-to. I've definitely recommended it to other friends who've been wanting to sort of try out stub nibs and it's at an afford a fairly affordable price point too. So just sort of, well, I like it, won't I? And to give it a shot. Um, but yeah, if you are a beginner who is interested in learning a little bit more about how your pen works, this one is definitely at the top of my list. Uh, it's the Twisby Eco and it runs around 3550 MSRP, but like with all of the pens that we've mentioned, you definitely can get it for less than that if you shop around a little bit. Okay, the final pen that I'm going to mention today is my favorite beginner fountain pen under 50-ish dollars, and that is the Lamy LX. Now, I know it should be under $50, but I mentioned this one in particular because it is on sale all the time, and I really, really like it for multiple reasons for beginners, but let's back up a little tiny bit. This, if you're at all familiar with fountain pens, looks a great deal like the Lamy Safari or potentially the Lamy AL. Now, they all have the same look to them, that same uh, body type with the pen clip in this kind of cool minimalist U loop. But what makes them all different? So the Lamy Safari is just a plastic fountain pen. That one runs well under $30. Um, most of the time you can get them in the teens and the twenties. They come in so many colors, but it is made of plastic. Uh, but it's a really great pen, not poo-pooing on that. Then there's the slight step up. That's the Lamy AL, which is an aluminum bodied pen. Uh, but 
and it also comes in a ton of great colors and is writes really, really well, but it does scratch like crazy, or at least it has in my experience. I am not missish with these particular kinds of pens. So they're the ones that usually go everywhere with me in a pocket or in a bag, you know, and you know, it, it's nice when things are super portable, but it sucks when they get super scratched up really fast. And I love the colors they have in that AL line, but for me, I get scratched like on the first couple of days and I'm so frustrated, which is why I'm particularly mentioning the LX. This one has the anodized aluminum, so it is a little bit more scratch resistant. I've had this one for couple years now and I don't have any scratches and again this gets thrown into my bag so I'm very not careful with it for for better or worse um, I am not careful with this pen and it still looks pretty pristine uh, I have this as mentioned in um, gold and in the maroon brown color and those ones are also in ex excellent condition no really big visible scratches anywhere and those also get chucked in too many a bag. Um, now, everything else about it besides that anodized aluminum is pretty much the same. You've got your little ink window right here, which I never find myself using. I just... <laughs> I just take off the body just to look. And I know that I can see, I, I mean, it's there for a reason. I can see through that window perfectly fine. I just always open it. So your mileage may vary if you're anything like me, but I do really like the look of it with that sort of translucent or kind of smoky black alongside the really beautiful precious metal uh, color. Uh, it also has a black nib uh, rather than just the middle colored one. So it does have a coating on it. I don't know that I personally think it writes any differently from a standard Lamy. I mean, it doesn't feel like a better writing experience, but it doesn't feel like a worse writing experience either. So that's neither here nor there to me. Uh, I do really like the medium and the bold nibs within Lamy. Uh, though that's not to say I don't like their uh, extra fines or fines. I just happen to really enjoy their mediums and bolds. I think they're great. Uh, and at the end of the day, it's one of those kinds of pens that you can collect easily. If you want to collect, you know, Lamy Safaris, you can do that if you want to collect the ALs. But if it were me, I would definitely pick the LX just because it's super duper sturdy and you still get that sort of like slightly elevated lux feel because of the metallic colors. Um, I don't know why it feels like the metallic shades are a little bit more lux, but eh, it, they do. <laughs> um, and it does come in a, a limited number of shades, this rose gold, the gold, the maroon, I think uh, palladium, and then, I don't know, does it come in rhodium? I'm not sure. Uh, but you can definitely get a, a few colors within this line, though certainly not as many as in the standard safari or the AL. But I would definitely look at this one um, as a great uh, way to begin if you're looking for something that's a little bit of a step up from Safari or from the AL. This is a good place to, 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 to try out at first. Okay, so these are my top five favorite fountain pens for beginners under 50-ish dollars. Um, these are my personal favorites just because your favorite is not on my list does not mean I dislike your pen. Um, there are so many others that could be included, but these ones are ones that I still use in my regular rotation, despite having plenty of other options. Uh, these are really great fun pens to write with. Uh, they look good. They feel good in the hand and they're just a fun writing experience. And, uh, they give me the chance to sort of try out different kinds of inks whenever and not have to be concerned about a gold nib clogging or whatever. Great, great pens to start out with. Uh, if this video has been at all interesting or helpful to you, please do consider clicking that like button. Potentially, if you really like the video, uh, consider subscribing to the channel. I always love uh, meeting new people out there. I adore fountain pens. This, this channel is not in any way, shape, or form sponsored. I buy everything uh, with my own money. I just happen to love this hobby so much. 
So if you do happen to have anything you want to chat about as far as these particular pens, if you have any questions, feel free to comment below. I will try and get back to you as soon as I can. Uh, and with that, I'm going to go ahead and sign off of this episode. Thank you so, so much for joining me. I love putting these videos together. Uh, and hopefully I will see you next time. Bye-bye.